In this video, we'll talk about the three different options for phase portraits when you have real eigenvalues. There's three main options here, and they are based on the signs of the different eigenvalues in the problem. So for this case, we're going to sketch out generic examples. When you go to do actual problems, you want to put the actual correct eigenvectors and have the problem focused around them as opposed to just generic ones that I'm going to do here. So option one is the one we saw previously is when both eigenvalues are negative. So in that case, we'll say we have R1 is less than R2 is less than zero. So R1 is more negative than R2. In this case, a general solution might look something like C1 times one minus one e to the R1t plus C2 one one e to the R2t. I'm picking one minus one 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 for my eigenvectors here. In an actual problem, you'll wanna put the correct ones in when you solve this out. And now for this picture, we start with our straight line solutions, which are a one minus one out this way, going in, because R1 is negative, and a one one going out this way, also point in because R2 is negative. Now what happens in the middle? So if I were to start here, R1 is more negative than R2, which means that as T goes to infinity, e to the r1t goes to zero first because r1 is more negative which means we're going to approach the origin along the r2 line or along the purple line so we're going to loop this way and come in on the purple line like this and if we were to leave we would leave and go along the green line because that term is going to matter on the other end you can fill in the other graphs as well to get your face portrait like this, and this is called a nodal sink like we saw in the previous example. This is when both eigenvalues are negative. Option two you can have here is when you have one negative and one positive eigenvalue. So we'll assume that R1 is less than zero, which is less than R2, and again have the same general solution. We can draw in our same eigenvectors like before. R1 is still pointed in because that eigenvalue is negative. But the R2 solution is now pointing out because it is a positive eigenvalue solution going away from the origin. But for these, it's now pretty easy what happens when we sketch out these plots. If I start in here, when T gets bigger, the R1 term goes to zero and the R2 term grows because with R1 being negative, e to the R1T goes to zero, whereas R2 being positive, e to the R2T goes to infinity. So the green part goes to zero and so I'm going to follow the purple line off to plus infinity. And if I were to go backwards, I would do the exact opposite and follow the green line back this way. We can draw these out for all the different sections. This is what's called a saddle point. This is when you have opposite signs. At this point, you can probably guess what option three is. It's when they are both positive. So we again have zero less than R1 less than R2 with our general solution and our same straight lines as before. But now since both eigenvalues are positive, everything here is going away from the origin. And what happens to an interim solution? As t gets bigger here, both e to the r1t and e to the r2t go off to infinity. However, because r2 is bigger, e to the r2t goes to infinity faster than e to the r1t, which means that it's more important as t goes to infinity in the sense that if I were to take the ratio of x and y here, it would match the ratio from the c2 term more than the c1 term because the c1 term here is getting bigger, but it's not nearly as big as the c2 term. So for instance, like as a comparison point, if I were to figure out, okay, where are x and y at a certain point? If I take t, so this value is like 100, and this value is a million, the point's gonna look a lot more like it's on this line than this one because this just has a bigger factor. It's so much bigger, it dominates the other term. And so we want to, again, go towards plus infinity along the purple line. That will give us something like this sort of path going off this way. And then going towards minus infinity, we're gonna see the same idea that we had from the nodal sink. The fact that R2 is bigger means it's gonna go away faster as T goes to minus infinity, so we're going to approach zero along the green line. So back in this way like this, and we're always running away. 
And we can draw the same thing for all the other setups here. We get a picture like this. And this is called a nodal source to contrast with the nodal sink. It's a source and everything is sort of flowing away from it, like a source of water and the water is flowing away. This is when both eigenvalues are positive. Those are the three main option pictures that you're going to get for these real and distinct eigenvalues for these systems. Your picture will look substantially different for different eigenvalues, eigenvalues, particularly if you have the eigenvectors really close together. It's going to look a little weird the way the curves behave, but the idea and the philosophy is still the same. You want to figure out what happens if t goes to plus infinity, which way does my graph go, which line does it approach. When I go to minus infinity, have, which line do I approach, and sort of weave those together to get you a picture that looks something like these for these different problems. Your three options, nodal sink, both negative, saddle point, one negative, one positive, and nodal source, both eigenvalues positive, are the three main things you'll see when looking for phase portraits for these systems with real and distinct eigenvalues.